Thank you for choosing Woods Power Grip products to help you in handling materials safely and efficiently. We've created this quick start guide to assist you in correctly setting up and using your model MRPT16DC3 vacuum lifter. This lifter features an optional integrated counterbalancer for enhanced load positioning. Its setup and use will be covered in this video as well. This guide is not a substitute for the lifter's operating instructions. Each operator should read and understand the entire manual before using this equipment. The instructions icon indicates when the manual offers important help for each quick start step. To begin, remove all shipping materials, including restraints. Keep these materials for later transport and storage. Connect the 12 volt battery to the electrical system. Also install the 9 volt battery for the lifter's notification buzzer. Press the power button on the lifter's IntelliGrip control unit. The first time this is done, the LCD screen will prompt you to select a language. Information about the lifter's status will also be displayed. Remove the radio transmitter from its holder and twist the emergency disconnect button clockwise until it locks. Then briefly press the power button to activate the remote control system. Next, use the transmitter to raise the lift bar. Then power down the lifter until it's time to set the lifter's weight. The MRPT-16 is equipped with an adjustable lift shackle. Determine which position will provide the best hang angle for handling a particular load. Typically, the position closest to the pad frame is the ideal choice when the lifter is not paired with a counterbalancer. The other positions are suitable when the counterweight is used. Select hoisting equipment and rigging rated for the maximum load capacity plus the lifter weight, including the integrated counterbalancer and any added counterweight. Make sure the hook has a latch to keep the shackle or rigging from slipping off. Now you're ready to lift the MRPT-16 out of its container. Save the container for later transport and storage. Remove the pad covers and save them for later use. Consult the instructions manual to help you select a configuration that matches the dimensions of your load. Connect an equal number of pads on each circuit of the lifter's dual vacuum system. In approved configurations, the end result will be symmetry of the two circuits. Pad hoses are color-coded to correspond with their circuit. Green designates circuit 1, while red designates circuit 2. Remove the cotterless pins and slide the telescoping pad arms into the required position. Then insert the pins. Do the same to reposition or remove vacuum pads. When removing a pad, disconnect its hose by moving the release ring of the quick connector to release the male end of the connector. To reconnect, reinsert the male end until it locks into position. Store any removed pads in a clean, dry place. Make sure to position vacuum hoses so they won't be damaged during operation. Once finished, compare your configuration to the diagram in the instructions to be certain it matches. Make sure the integrated counterbalancer is in the fully retracted position. Add an equal amount of counterweight on each support arm, one plate at a time. Consult the weight charts to determine the minimum number of 45-pound plates necessary for your load. Finally, secure the plates with weight clamps. Remember, counterweight should not be extended before the load is attached. Before proceeding with a lift, read and follow all safety rules and always wear the right personal protective gear for the job. Check the 12-volt battery to make sure it is charged. Understand the requirements stated for this lifter's intended use. 
including load characteristics and operating environment. Three inspections noted here must be performed before each lift. Identify and correct any deficiencies you might find. Inspect lifter and load. Examine vacuum pads for contaminants or damage. Examine load surface for contaminants or debris. Examine controls and indicators for damage. Before putting the lifter into service, conduct operational tests, a vacuum test, and a rated load test as directed. The instruction manual lists other periodic tests that are equally important. The buttons on the radio transmitter are designed to serve as the MRPT-16's primary controls, allowing operation up to 250 feet or 76.2 meters away from the lifter. Radio functions include attaching and releasing vacuum pads, disengaging a latch for a load rotation, controlling the tilt actuators, and moving counterweight. You can press the emergency disconnect button on this device at any time to prevent radio transmissions. We recommend that you use the disconnect button between functions to prevent pushing other buttons accidentally. Keep in mind that the transmitter will power down after a period of inactivity. If this happens, press its power button again. Of course, the buttons on the IntelliGrip control unit may also be used to command the lifter especially in emergency cases or when you're troubleshooting or performing maintenance. Always remember to stay clear of the lifter's moving parts, the attached load or anything else that could fall. The instructions contain details for using the control unit's buttons, while the surface manual contains details for navigating and telegrip menus. Now it's time to power up the lifter again which will allow you to manage the MRPT-16's lifter weight setting. This setting will enable the lifter to calculate the load weight correctly and recognize when a load is being supported. An incorrect setting may block the load release function. When the lifter is first powered up, you can set the lifter weight in the Confirm Settings screen. Make sure the MRPT-16 is unloaded and hanging freely. Then select Set Lifter Weight. If the lifter configuration has not changed, the previous lifter weight can just be accepted. During typical operation, the lifter weight and load weight will be displayed on the screen. The lifter weight may also be accessed from the operator menu. Remember, the lifter weight must be reset every time the counterweight is added or removed. Make sure all vacuum pads will fit on the load and will be loaded evenly. Use rigging as needed to prevent a load from making contact with the hoist hook during operation. Remember the emergency disconnect button must be reset by twisting it and allowing it to spring outward and the transmitter must be powered up. Position the pads so they're in contact with the load surface. Both the pads and the load should be clean. Press the attach button on the transmitter to seal the pads against the load. If it's difficult to get the pads to seal, push on the pads that are nearest to the center of the pad frame, then push on the others if needed. Check the two vacuum gauges. The needles of both gauges should register in the green range when vacuum level is adequate. If anything adversely affects the vacuum in one circuit, the other circuit is there to maintain vacuum. When vacuum level is adequate, the green vacuum lift light will turn on, indicating the MRPT-16 is ready to begin the lift. For safety reasons, the operator must be able to see the vacuum level indicators at all times. While you are lifting, the vacuum pump will shut off temporarily to conserve battery energy and will turn on again when needed to overcome leakage. If the vacuum level drops quicker than expected, the notification buzzer will chirp several times. Be aware that such leakage will result in more frequent pump cycles, which in turn will cause the 12 volt battery to discharge more quickly. If the pump cannot overcome leakage, the buzzer will sound, the strobe light will flash, and the green light will turn off. 
If this happens, stay clear of the load and set it down, if it's possible to do so safely. Identify and fix problems before resuming operation. If vacuum levels are stable within the green range, continue with the lift. If needed, grasp the pad frame to manually keep the lifter and load in the required position. Avoid positioning yourself or others directly beneath the counterbalancer. Make sure the load won't hit anyone or anything during rotation. Use handcuffs, control lines, or other appropriate means to control the movement. Press and hold both rotation latch release buttons. The strobe light will flash to notify that a button is being held and that the lifter recognizes the transmission. If the latch does not release, continue holding the buttons while you relieve the force that's binding the latch pin. After rotation starts, continue to hold both buttons. When the load nears its intended position, let go of the buttons to allow the latch to re-engage at the next position. Make sure there is enough room to tilt the load without hitting anyone or anything. Press and hold tilt up or tilt down buttons to tilt the load as needed. The tilt actuator will continue working as long as you keep holding the button. Let go of the button to stop the motion when the desired angle is reached. We've discussed using the emergency disconnect button on the radio transmitter as a safeguard, but there's another button to press in an emergency, one that's located on the lifter itself. Pressing the onboard emergency stop button will emergency stop all power motion and allow the rotation pin to engage at the next available latch position. However, the vacuum system will continue to function after the button is pressed in order to keep the load attached. After emergency is resolved, you're ready to resume operating the lifter. Reset the emergency stop button by twisting it clockwise until it springs back to its normal position. The integrated counterbalancer offsets lifter and load weight, making it easier and safer to match rough openings. First, confirm the counterweight is fully retracted before attaching to a load. Use the counterweight retract button if necessary. When lifting a load, press the counterweight extend button as needed to change the center of gravity and maintain balance of the lifter and load. Before releasing the load, be certain it's not moving and that it's fully supported. If you are using the counterbalancer, make sure the counterweight is fully retracted as well. These steps will minimize any unexpected motion of the lifter or load during a load release. When the counterweight is fully retracted and the load needs only minimal support from the lifter, a white indicator light will turn on. The light indicates the conditions for a release have been met. If not, any attempt to release the load will cause the buzzer to sound, the strobe light to flash, and the release function to be prevented. However, if you're sure that all necessary precautions have been taken, then a load release may be achieved. Read the instructions manual for more information. Press the function and release buttons to break the vacuum seal. Continue to hold the buttons until the pad disengages completely from the load. If the pads don't disengage easily, try moving the lifter away from the load while continuing to press the buttons. If the pads still don't disengage, the lifter has a timed release function that can help. Go to the instructions manual for the details about this function. Press and briefly hold the power button and the function button on the IntelliGrip control unit to power down the lifter. If a load is still attached, the lifter will sound an alarm and the operator should let go of both buttons. Although powering down the lifter with the load attached is not typically recommended, it is possible provided that the load is fully supported. Consult the instruction manuals for the details. Choose a clean, dry location for storage. The lifter should be kept out of the ring. Tilt the pad frame until it's parallel to the ground. 
Rotate the parking stands so the lifter will rest on them when it's lowered. This will help keep the vacuum pads clean and free from damage during temporary storage. Lower the lifter onto an even stable support. Charge the battery promptly after each day's use. Put the covers back on the pads. Make sure the counterbalancer is in the fully retracted position. Then remove the counterweight from the support arms, one plate at a time. Lower the lifter into its original container. Repack the lifter using the saved shipping materials and restraints. Disconnect the hoisting equipment. Lower the lift bar into the support. Make sure the transmitter's emergency disconnect button is pressed, then stow it. Disconnect the electrical connectors in order to minimize power drainage and comply with shipping requirements. For long storage, charge the battery completely before placing into storage, then once every six months. Make sure you read, understand, and follow the guidance provided in the MRPT-16 instructions manual because it includes additional information and warnings. You can download a copy of the instructions from the product page at WPG.com. Thank you again for choosing Woods Power Grip products.